If you're working with spatial audio, there are two formats that come to mind. One is Ambisonics and the other one is Dolby Atmos. Now I made a number of videos on both formats and also explaining the differences and the similarities, but I've never really talked about how to convert one format to the other format. And this is what I want to change today. So in this video today, I'm going to show you how to convert Ambisonics into Dolby Atmos. And best of all, we are mainly going to use free software. How cool is that? But first of all, hello everybody. In case you're new here, my name is Michael Wagner. I teach at the Antoinette Westfall College of Media Arts and Design at Drexel University in Philadelphia. And on this channel, I talk about digital media, game design and spatial audio. And if any of those topics interest you, I invite you to subscribe or join my Discord community. An invite link is in the description below. Now, the original motivation to this video came from an interaction that I had with Noah Neumark. Noah is the developer of the head tracking modification for the Envelope for Life system. Now, if you don't know what Envelope for Life is, it doesn't really matter for this particular video. But just to give you some background information, Envelope for Life is an extension to Ableton Live. And uh, it essentially uses Max for Life in order to extend the capabilities of Ableton to include the production of spatial audio in Ambisonics format. And if you're using Envelope for Life, the natural question is, can I turn Ambisonics that I produce with Ableton into Dolby Atmos? Because that would be one of the few ways how you can use Ableton Live to create Dolby Atmos audio. And the answer to that is yes. And there are actually a couple of different ways on how you can do that. And uh, I decided, therefore decided to create two parts of this video. In the first part, we are going to look at a workflow that uses only free software. Or I should probably clarify, not completely free. There's Reaper in there. And as we know, Reaper isn't technically free software, but you can use it on a perpetual demo license if you want. But we are mainly going to use free and low cost software with some trade-offs. And these trade-offs are actually a little bit significant or a little bit more significant than I would like them to be. So because they are so significant, I decided to create a second part of this tutorial that I'm going to post next week. Uh, and in the second part, we're going to use the capabilities of Cubase or Nuendo, it doesn't really make any difference, in order to do it correctly and to do it in a, in a slightly more, more qualitative, better way. Let's call it that way. And with that being said, um, let's get right into creating some Dolby Atmos out of Ambisonics. Now, the way I'm going to start this today is with a very simple test file that I've created in Reaper. And this file is primarily meant to show me if all the conversions is done, are done correctly. So it's essentially just a series of beeps, really, <laughs> that are coming from the six different directions, front, back, left, right, bottom, top. And uh, I've used Resynth just to make a, a short beep. Let's just have a brief listen to it. It's not particularly interesting, but nevertheless. And uh, what I've essentially done is I've used the IAM plugin suite. So I'm using the stereo encoder in order to position that sound in one of the cardinal directions. Uh, so uh, we can actually see that if I, if I open up the energy visualizer here, so, so we will see essentially it's, it's going to be front, back, left, right, bottom, top, front, back, left, right, bottom, top. And, uh, and then essentially I'm just exporting that in third order Ambisonics format. And this is going to be the file that I'm going to start with. The tool we're going to use in order to transcode Ambisonics into Dolby Atmos comes from a software developer called Mach1. Mach1 uh, provides a number of software products that rely on a proprietary uh, spatial audio format that they have developed and that is supposed to be very good. Uh, we actually had a number of discussions about them in our Discord community. So I might actually do a video about that in the not too distant future. Uh, if you want, just kind of go to the website and check them out. It's fairly interesting. Uh, but here we're really only going to use one particular tool. And that one tool that we're going to use is the command line function of their transcoder. And the transcoder is essentially a piece of software that is capable of transcoding any spatial audio format or almost any spatial audio format into almost any other spatial audio format by going through the propriety Mach 1 format in between. Fortunately, the tool that I'm going to use is something that you can simply download for free from GitHub. I'm going to post a link in the description below. So essentially you go to that particular website and then you go to the executable section and in the executable section, you download whatever 
software platform that you have. It's currently available for Windows, Linux, and Unix. And uh, that's really all we need to do. We need to download that particular executable, uh, put it on your system somewhere so that we can use it. And then we are already ready to go. Now, there's one thing that I need to make perfectly clear, and that is when we are converting MBSonics into Dolby Atmos, we obviously do not have any objects because in MBSonics, we don't really have an object-based format. It's just a channel-based format. And that means that uh, when we are converting MBSonics into Dolby Atmos, the best we can really do is convert the MBSonics file into a Dolby Atmos bed. And that already creates some severe restrictions because a Dolby Atmos bed, if you remember, can only be up to 7.1.2. And that means it isn't really fully 3D. It only has two overhead speakers, two overhead channels, and not four as we needed, uh, as we would need if we would have really uh, a fully spatial audio format, a fully 3D audio format. So we're already losing a little bit of the spatial nature of, of MBSonics. And that is, a, that is a restriction we simply have to work with. Now, in the video that I'm going to do next week, I'm going to show you an approach how you get can get around that. We are going to use some additional helper objects in order to increase the reach, the spatial reach of our MBSonics file. But in this uh, approach that we're going to do today, this is not possible. What we're going to do here is we're essentially going to take the MBSonics file and we're going to convert it into a Dolby Atmos bed. Now what I've done is I've downloaded the M1 Transcode tool to my desktop and I've also put the audio file that I want to convert on my desktop just to make everything simple and I opened up a command prompt and um, changed into the desktop directory. And uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look how that M1 transcode tool actually works, that command line tool. Unfortunately, the documentation is a little bit sketchy, but what we can do is we can simply call the tool and it will, it will actually tell us what it does. So let's call it. So let's say M1 transcode. And uh, then we essentially get all the options. So the way this really works is that you have to call the tool with the following options. You have first start with FMT convert, then we have an in file, you have an in format, you have an out file and an out format. And in terms of the uh, formats that it supports, uh, here are all the formats listed. And what we really want to do is we have an MBSonics file and we used, by the way, we use the IEM uh, encoder. So we're going to use one of the MBSonics files that are listed here because we're using the IEM encoder. And what we want to do is we want to convert that into the Dolby Atmos 712, which is a Dolby Atmos file that essentially just contains a bed. So this is really everything we are going to do. So let's, let's simply do that. So we are saying M1 trans code. I hope I mis don't mistype here because I have the microphone right in front of me. Uh, FMT convert, then we have an in file and the in file uh, was test. I didn't show you how I did that, but uh, I think you can believe me that I essentially kind of used that particular Reaper project in order to create that. Uh, it's called test 303A. It's a, it's a third order ambisonics file. Oh no, I, I called it, sorry, I called it 30A, third order ambisonics.wav. And the input format is uh, ACNSN 3D max RE 3. That's a mouthful, OA. And uh, yeah, I, I think I spelled that right. And then the out file, let's call that test ADM dot buff and the out format is Dolby Atmos 712. Dolby Atmos 712. And that should be it. And if I didn't do any any typos, then this should convert it. So let's see how it goes. And here we are. So it's converted that file and we now should have a Dolby Atmos master file. So let's see what this actually gave us. Now, the best way to check what we've got is to simply load that Dolby Atmos master file in a door that can actually import Dolby Atmos master files. And uh, this is actually one of the things that differentiates Cubase and Nuendo. Both uh, DAWs can export Dolby Atmos, but only Nuendo can actually import it. So uh, in order to check that out, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to load up Nuendo. 
The way you import a Adobe Atmos master file into Nuendo is uh, like you import any audio file, really. So you go into the file import section and on the import, you here have the ADM option. So let's uh, click on that. And uh, I have that located on the, the desktop. So let's go to the desktop. And uh, on the desktop here, we have the test ADM WAV. So this is the Adobe Atmos file. I'm going to open that. It's going to ask me what I want to import. It only has a bed in there. So let's click on that. We want to import that and click OK. And this is essentially the import that I'm getting. So let's just open that up a little. And the first thing that we see is that if we look at the waveforms here, and that is actually one of the advantages of doing it that way by using this type of test file, is that we all really only have action on four channels, right? So that's the, the first two, which is a left and right. And then the uh, channel number five and six, which are the two surround channels. We don't really have anything in the uh, LFE. We don't have anything in the center channel and we don't have uh, much in the overhead channel really. So, and this is actually one of the main limitations if you're doing that way, as it turns out. Uh, the conversion tool does create a Dolby Atmos file, but it sort of really kind of neglects the hate information. And we're going to see in a second how that, uh, how that is actually going to turn out. Now, um, in order to listen to that, I would have technically would have to set up the Dolby Atmos uh, settings or the Dolby Atmos in the way I did it in the tutorial about uh, how to set up Dolby Atmos in Cubase by adding a particular bus with a renderer and everything. I'm not going to do that here because I only have a bed. All I really want to do is I want to listen to that particular bed. So I'm just going to take that bed and I'm going to connect that to the stereo out. Uh, and uh, instead of setting up a complete Dolby Atmos file. And if I'm setting that up now, I should actually be able to hear what, uh, what the file sounds like. So let's just start it. So that sounds pretty much okay, but I actually want to check if, uh, if all the directions are correct. So I heard the left and the right correct, but are the front and the back also correct? And most importantly, what's happening to the top, top and the bottom? In order to check if everything is going correctly, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a helper track. And the only reason I'm doing that is because I want to move the bed channel uh, in order to see if the front is actually really in the front and, and in the back. And you will see in a second what I mean, but let's go back into Noendo. And what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to add a group track and this group track is going to be a third order ambisonics track. And let's call this helper. Help. Uh, add track and then we're going to route the bus track into this helper track and as soon as I do that I get this panning function and that will essentially allow me to pan the uh, 7.1.2 track into an ambisonics track. Let me just see if I hear if I still hear something. Yeah it's it's still there. So so let's let's see. So in the the way it is currently set up, so essentially the, the, the third beep is from here, the, the fourth beep is from here, but the first beep is coming from the front and the, the fourth beep is coming from the back. So if I, if I just move, if I rotate around the C-axis by 90 degrees, essentially the first one, which is this one, should now be on the, on, uh, on the, on the, on the left side. So, so that is working correctly. Uh, but if I now tilt by 90 degrees, uh, then essentially the, the, uh, the, the last two should be on the left side now. And that's not really what's happening. And that uh, we already saw that in the uh, file, if we just inspected the original file, we don't really have a lot of information in the height. So apparently the transcoder function does uh, ignore the height information, or at least uh, most of it. There's a little bit of information in there, but not really all that much. Now, my first thought was that the uh, problem was actually in the first part of the transcoding process. Now, if you remember, and I briefly said that the transcoding according to the Mach 1 transcoder actually is done in two steps. And the first step takes the ambisonics file and turns that into an M1 spatial format file. And then it takes the M1 spatial format and converts that into Dolby Atmos. So the first thing that I thought is maybe the problem is in the first part of the transcoding process. When the uh, when when the transcoder takes the ambisonics file and turns that into an an M1 
special file. Uh, so what I did is I used the very same uh, Reaper project and converted that into a 7.1.2 file with the idea that if I already have a 7.1.2 file and I'm doing this very same process with the 7.1.2 file, the result should actually be much better because the Adobe Atmos bed is a 7.1.2 file. So it, if, if it works perfectly, there should actually be no change whatsoever. Now, unfortunately, that is not the case. And even if I feed in a 7.1.2 file, uh, the transcoder, the M1 transcoder actually squ squishes everything. It takes out most of the channels. It takes out the hate information. And the result that you're getting is exactly the same that I'm getting, or pretty much exactly the same that I'm getting with the Ambisonics file. Now that is particularly unfortunate because uh, as it turns out, you're actually losing all the information in the center channel. If you're coming in with the 7.1.2 file and you're using the very same um, project that I had, the first beep came from the front and that essentially means that it was right in the center. So in the 7.1.2 file, it actually has a lot of information in the center channel. However, once I run it through the transcoder, uh, that center information is lost. So what the transcoder really does is it takes all the information and uh, all the spatial information and it just populates the four main channels, the left channel, the right channel, and the two surround channels. And then it adds a little bit of hate information, but not nothing of any, any particular importance. So it just kind of gives a little bit of hate, hate information in addition to that. That's all it does. It completely ignores the center channel. It completely ignores the other surround channels. And that is really unfortunate. However, it is important to point out that uh, even with all the disadvantages, uh, this is actually a way to convert uh, your pro project into a Adobe Atmos file without paying anything really. Um, so you can simply use any system that allows you to produce uh, Ambisonics content. So for example, Reaper is very good for that purpose and uh, use that particular command line tool in order to convert that ambisonics file into a Dolby Atmos uh, file. And even though it kind of takes out a lot of information, it is a Dolby Atmos file. So if you want to submit it to a streaming service that takes in Dolby Atmos content, you can do that. And you can do that with tools that are free or nearly free. And that uh, with all its limitations is still pretty cool, I think. However, uh, because this is so restrictive, I decided to do a second part to this video and this is going to come next week and I'm going to show you how to work around all these issues that we discussed today by just staying within Cubase. Uh, we're going to use additional objects in order to kind of make up for the things that are missing in the bed and uh, that will give us a much, much better a way of converting Ambisonics into Dolby Atmos, but it will require us to work with at least Cubase or Nuendo or really any other DAW that can take uh, or that can produce Dolby Atmos. Now, this is really everything I wanted to say today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please don't forget to press the like button. If you have any questions or comments, please use the comment section below or join my Discord community. Invite link is in the description below. And at, in my Discord community, there's a very lively discussion about all topics, Dolby Atmos and Episonics and um, many other things as well. So if you have any interest in these things, uh, you will find like-minded people there. And with that being said, see you at the next video.